Hey, this is Kev with Blender Binge, back with another tutorial for you. This time we're going to be making medically illustrated stem cell looking thingies. And uh, if you go and you type in stem cells, you see like a ton of images that look very similar to this. So I'm just going to say that this is probably the agreed upon way to illustrate stem cells out in the world if you're not looking at it under an electron microscope. Got it? Let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a default cube. I'm going to select him and I'm going to hit control five on the keyboard. Now, why the heck would I do that? Here's why. If I go over to the modifiers tab over here, that just added in a subdivision surface. So I didn't have to go like add modifier and find subdivision surface and then set auto. So I was just able to do it control five. Now, normally I would never hit control five because that would choke most computers. But being that we started with a cube, low resolution, we just get this. So now what I'll do is Viewport is set at 5. Render, I'm going to set at 5. So that way, when I hit render later, I don't have an oops, look at that, it looks like crap. It's going to look like pretty much what I want it to look like. Okay, you'll see later. Now, second thing I'll do is I'll create the nucleus. So to do that, I'm just going to go to add modifier. I'm going to say displace, and it makes it huge, not what I want. I'm going to hit new. It makes it small. Again, not what I want. Thank you, Blender. So what I'll do is I'll hit this little thingy over here, show texture tab in show texture and texture tab, which is the same as hitting this. So I'm not sure why these are both here, but hey, that's cool, whatever. So I'm going to hit that and I'm going to say type, not image or movie, and I'm going to say Voronoi and boom. Hey, look at that. That's kind of cool. And then distance metric, I'm going to change this to distance squared. There's no real reason I'm doing this other than the fact that I just kind of like the way it looks. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to say object, I'm going to say shade smooth, and then I'm going to go back to my little wrench here for modifiers. I'm going to turn the strength down. I'm going to go negative like 0.3 and look at that. I now get this cool like blobby look and that's just what I would imagine the cell stem cell nucleus would look like because I, if I ever saw one in real life which I haven't, and you probably haven't either, unless you're a scientist. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make the membrane. So to do that, I think I'm gonna add in, you know what, I'm gonna just duplicate this, cause why not? I like, I have it, like why not duplicate it, right? So Shift D, duplicate it. So click once so it's not tied to this move tool. And then you're gonna hit S on the keyboard and scale it up just a little bit. And with this, I can kind of just take down the strength of this and I can also go ahead and instead of using Voronoi here, I can use like, let's see, noise. I don't like that. Stucci, Stucci. Let's use Stucci, 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 Stucci. Sounds good. Maybe Perlin, improve Perlin. Sure, that's fine. That'll probably work for what we need right now. So now let's go ahead and begin to shade this thing. So the first thing I'll do is I'm gonna turn on EV. So I'm gonna go over here to rendered, up this little thing. I'm gonna to go to my little back of the camera thingy or whatever, render. And I'm going to say screen space reflections. I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna turn off half res trace and I'm gonna turn on refraction. Okay, I like that. that that'll work. And then, uh, shadows, I think I'll turn on high bit and soft shadows because why not? I'm, I'm in here, I'll use it. That's fine. And uh, that's probably good enough. I think I have everything set the way I want it, so I'm happy. Yes, happy. So what I'll do now is I will use the shading. So I could go here and use the shading tab, but I think I just want to use this. So I'm just going to go down, pull up a, a little window here. And I'm going to say shader editor. So now I have a shader editor and we can see everything and it looks great and blah, blah. So what I'll do is I'm going to say my original cube, which is the one inside here, I'm going to rename to nucleus. It's not nucleus, not nuclear, it's nucleus. And then I'm going to change cube, ah, double click and say membrane. Insane in the, ma okay, whatever. So check that out, cool, I like that. Now, okay, so membrane, I have this material. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna say transmission all the way up. And you see absolutely nothing happening in here. The reason for that, that we don't see through this is because they don't give us this by default. So we have to go down here 
to material, all right, for membrane material. We can go scroll all the way down and blend mode. I'll say alpha clip, turn on screen space refraction. Okay, so we'll play with refraction depth and we're not gonna really touch that yet. What we need to do also is realize that nucleus and membrane both have the same material. So let's go to nucleus here. Let's go to the materials tab. Scroll up and we're gonna add a new material to nucleus. And so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna name this one membrane. And this one I'm gonna hit new. I'm gonna call this nucleus shader or whatever. And I'm gonna hit tab with nucleus and then I'm just gonna hit assign. See I have nucleus on, assign, and hit tab again. And now I have the nucleus inside there. So for nucleus here, I can go ahead, base color, change it to whatever I want, like red, it's fine. And I could turn the roughness down, make it shiny, leave that as is. And what I could do here on membrane now is I could turn the roughness down and you see we're seeing through it. Well, that's kind of nice. And what if I see how it's like really refracted? If I don't want it to be super refracted, I could take the refraction depth and kind of play with that. And you can, I mean, you can get like really accurate here, but if you're doing just like kind of artistic looking stuff, you can just kind of leave it as is and uh, find something that you're kind of happy with. And that I'm pretty okay with for now. So roughness here, you can turn that up and give it more of like a rough kind of membrane, but you, you get the, you get the picture. Next, what I'll do is I'm going to play with the world. So I'm going to go over here to object and I'm going to change this to world. And if I scroll with my mouse and I pull out here, I can see I have a background background here, change it to black, nothing, change it to white, see everything. So you can play with this or you can, do something really interesting with this and go add or hit shift a either one go to texture I'll say Voronoi I'll color to color and there I have kind of a cell looking shader and again you could put anything in the background here HDRI anything anything you want but I'm just gonna do this for the sake of this video and then I'll make it a uh, kind of a bluish color maybe so I'll go shift a Go to converter, color ramp, take Voronoi out here, factor to factor, color to color. And now I can go ahead and change this to whatever color I want. So I'll go like a kind of light blue. I don't know, something like that. And you can play with the scale and just kind of get something that looks somewhat interesting to you. And you can also take another Voronoi, Shift D, take the factor, plug that in like scale and start getting really kind of broken up looking stuff. So there, there's a, a million things you can do here. There's no one way to, to make anything look cool. I'm just doing this for the sake of the video to throw a background in here and start getting some refraction and reflection in this object. Okay, so next, let's play with the camera a little bit. So I'm just gonna take the camera and position it so I'm going to select the camera and I'm going to hit Alt R and Alt G. That centers it and clears out the rotation. Now what I could do is select this little arrow up here and I'll go to rotation on the, the X. I'll hit 90. That's just going to face it right down that way. Go to the move tool, pull it back a little bit. And now I can hit zero and there we go. So we're starting to get something that's passable as a as a you know, decent composition. So now we can work on the lighting. So notice I did not turn on lock camera to view. If you do that, you can kind of scroll around and move the camera around, but I'm gonna leave that off for now. And I'm just gonna work on lighting. So quick, quick and dirty lighting here. Uh, simply gonna add an empty into the center. And then I'm gonna add in a light and I'm gonna say area light. And I'll pull that, pull that area light up. And then I think what I'll do is I will, uh, I'm gonna make that stare at the center. 
So what I'll do with that is go to constraint, hit track to target, choose my empty. And then for this one, I'll use negative Z and I'll just leave it at that. It's not active right now because it's not working, but we're going to, we're going to change that in a minute. So I'm going to hit shift D now to duplicate this guy and pull him around. And you'll notice that he still has the constraint on it. So now all I have to do is just kind of find, find his happy place, which is on the Y. So you leave that there, just hit up Y. And there you go. So now I have this guy staring straight at this as well. And then I can duplicate him, Shift D, okay? Pull him over, and he's looking that way too. So now I have kind of a three-point lighting setup where I can just find whatever looks cool to me and go with it. So what I can do now is hit zero again and start playing with the lights. So area light one is above us. I probably don't even need this on anymore, but I'll just leave it for the for the sake of it. Why not? It's not hurting anything. And I'll say power 150. And I could take the size here, maybe go uh, 25. It's pretty big. And uh, 1500. I start getting something something workable. 15,000. I start getting something really crazy. And I can see that this thing is uh it's kind of flickering. So to to fix that. This is a really quick fix. Not sure if this is like a really great solution or not, but you could take viewport here, sampling. So if you go here to render and just turn that down to zero, and that just kind of takes that flicker off for now. So we're not looking at anything crazy. So now I can take these area lights here and I can play around a little bit more. So I can click on the light. So hit area, click on the light, and I can give it more. So let's see, 150 from the side, 1500 from the side, blow that up to like eight. 1500 other side, you blow that up to 18. And then you can move these around and kind of find something that you're happy with. And these work as lights in the real world. So the further you pull them away, the, the less intense they get. And maybe pull them up on the, on the Z, pull them back a little bit more. And you start getting start getting lights and a look that you can kind of dig. And you can go back and play with these as well. So let's see if I go to world and I go to object here. Okay. Roughness is up a bit. You can see you pull it out, pull it in and start getting something that looks kind of cell ish. And now what we can also do is I can back out of here. So what I'll do is I'll go to, go to view, lock camera to view, scroll out a little bit, and I can make this guy membrane, hit S, make him a little bit bigger. And now I'm starting to get this shape. So I can also go to membrane here, or nucleus, and what I'll do is I'll turn on some subsurface scattering And my base color here, and kind of push up something interesting. And the membrane here, I also really play with the strength. And I can also go back to texture here, play with the size a little bit, make it more membrane-y. Go back here, strength, like negative one. And you start getting something, something usable. Now what we could also do here is take our area lights, kind of pull them out and get something that kind of works. So now what I'll do is I can duplicate the heck out of this thing. So I'm gonna take off look, lock camera to view and I'm gonna hit B on the keyboard and select both of these. Oops, I don't want area selected. I just want my nucleus and my membrane selected. Okay, hit shift D, pull that out. You can scale this guy down a little bit. Okay, let's see, shift D. Pull him out, shift D, shift D, shift D, shift D, and you start getting something kind of interesting. Lastly here, I can add another light all the way in the back. So I can go add, light, throw a point light in there, turn it way up, and push it all the way back. And maybe take another one here, and pull them in the front. 
and see what we get. All right, we're getting more light now, looking a little bit better, getting nice reflections off the other lights. They're starting to reflect each other. And I can keep going with this and massaging it until something I'm really happy with. But the video will go on and on and on and on and on forever. So at some point we have to keep going. So what I'm going to do here is hit camera and I'm going to just throw in depth of field now. So I'm going to say camera. I'm going to add another empty in here. This time maybe a cone so I can see it. Hit S, scale it up just so I can see it. It's not a, not a rendering object, so don't worry about it. And then I'm going to camera, I'm going to say depth of field, focus on, it's going to be empty 001. We could have named it cone, whatever, doesn't matter. And I'm going to say f-stop. Is uh, It's kind of arbitrary with the blender units. So if it's not working for you, you can just kind of find your, your, your spot if you want, where the ones in the back start blurring out and then the ones in the front, you know, where, where your aim is, is fine. See now... Cool thing is about adding this empty is now if I move this guy, so let's say if I move him on the Y back forward, I can control my depth of field. So you can get those like cool rack focus effects. Right, so you just kind of want to leave him where he was at zero and that's fine. So now if I render this, you'll see, we'll see what it looks like. All right, so there's a basic, very basic looking, very clean, looking shot of, uh, of the representation of a cell, of a, of a stem cell. Other things we can do, we can add more lights, we can brighten it up. So let's see what it looks like when I go and duplicate a bunch more of these. I'm going to pause the video and come back with it more duplicated. All right, so here we are back. I duplicated this a lot more times. And another thing you can do uh, is if you don't like the look of the uniformity of all this stuff, and I generally don't, uh, what we could have done in the beginning and uh, didn't do is take the membrane and change from uh, texture coordinates from local to global. And you can do that on a few of these, the ones that are, you know, visible. And that'll that'll change the look and feel of this. And then you can adjust to your liking. But this looks kind of membrane-y to me now, and I'm kind of digging it. And you can also play with the roughness a little bit and make it a little more thick, a little more... Uh, globby whatever and uh play around and see if you like it so if i render this now we'll see what it looks like and that's looking pretty uh stem celly so other than this you can just go ahead and add a lot more stuff in here just make it look more uh you know like a more natural environment but uh that pretty much gives you the the, the gist of how you would go about doing something like this so if you like this video please hit like subscribe share it hit that little bell notification because i keep making more and i will keep making more of these for you thanks talk to you later bye